Hey everyone, it's Oli Lindley here from One Number, and we're going to take a look at five practical uses of level of detail expressions. We don't have tons of LOD content out yet, and so I thought maybe it would be good for us to take a look at some actual practical use cases of LODs as opposed to just a theory, because I found it super helpful to actually look at when you'd use an LOD, and that really helped me understand what they do, how they work, how we should think about using them. We use LODs in every dashboard we build, so hopefully this is helpful. The first one I want to take a look at is this um, percentage of total sales from each region. We've got region on color and subcategory on rows. Now, if you wanted to know um, what is the sales amount for each subcategory, what could you do? Well, you could put sales on rows like this and make it discrete. But the problem is now Tableau is generating a measure, a mark for each, uh, you know, for the level of detail, which is subcategory and region. We basically want to say to Tableau, I, I don't want the region and subcategory sales. I just want the subcategory sales. How do we do that? Well, you could say, maybe you are one step ahead. We could say for each region, mm -mm, surprisingly not regular expression extract, um, for each region, show me my sum of sales. This would work, <clears throat> okay. However, I'm gonna use exclude because I wanna show you exclude, include, and fixed in this video. Now, there are two reasons I would use exclude and not fixed in this case. The first is that if I use fixed, I won't be able to subject this field to dimension filters, and I won't be able to use a different dimension in my view and still have this give me my sum of sales for that particular dimension. I'd have to create a new field, which would be fine. However, it might be easier to say something like excluding region, show me my sum of sales. Now exclude basically works by indicating to Tableau what dimensions it should ignore. So we're saying um, it just ignore the region dimension, the region field, and aggregate sum of sales for every other dimension that's in my view. So the only other dimension that's in my view in this, in this uh, particular worksheet is subcategory. So when we drop this in here and we make it discrete, you can see we now have our subcategory sales, not because this is actually saying, oh, for each subcategory, give me my sum of sales, but because we're saying, just ignore the region field and then show me my sum of sales for whatever's left, which means we can use that exact same field in this view where we have segment instead of subcategory and we're still getting the correct sales amount. And the other benefit of exclude in this case is that we've got a little year filter over here and that amount is changing based off of our selection, which is very, very cool. So if it was fixed, why wouldn't this work with fixed? Well, maybe you need to come to our order of operations seminar coming up uh, in, a, in a week or two <clears throat> and that link will be down below. We'll dive into all of this in, in a lot of detail, but basically fixed expressions are carried out before dimension filters. So we wouldn't be able to use a normal dimension filter to filter a fixed expression. The second one that I wanted to show you is looking at a, something called frequency analysis. You're basically trying to say, hey, how many customers do we have who've made nine orders? Right? How many customers do we have who put through three orders or 13 orders or whatever? It's a really useful piece of data to have. So you can see that we've set this up pretty nicely. And what's the magic here? The magic is this number of orders field. So number of orders per customer. Let's edit that. So you can see we're saying, okay, for each customer, give me a distinct count of their order ID. Okay, so tell me how many orders do we have per customer? Perfect. Now, I want to use this for our frequency analysis like this. So all I did was right click and duplicate the field and drag it into our dimensions like this field here. So it's exactly the same for each customer ID. Give me account distinctive order ID. And what's that going to do? Well, it's just going to create little labels for me down here and it's going to group account distinctive customer ID into each of those little buckets. So now I'm saying, oh, the who, who put five orders through? Well, let's count the number of customers. We've got 134. 
really, really useful. And I think this kind of analysis can be super beneficial to your business analysis. My third one that I'm hoping will be useful is looking at only multiple records or only single records. So in this case, we want to know how much profit came from customers who've only purchased once from us. So you can see not very much. <laughs> but what exactly did we do? Well, we just built the region and uh, sum of profit on columns. And then we used that same old number of orders per customer. Here's the magic. Same old number of orders per customer that we've just built, drop it onto filters, and I'm gonna choose all values. Because if I sum it, it's gonna try and you know give me all the total number of orders that we have. We actually just wanna say, show me all the values, right? So that 17 rings a bell from the previous chart. And I'm just gonna say one to one, and there we go. These are the guys who only bought from us once. And you can do the same for like more than five times or more than three times, whatever it is. And it's pretty cool. If you want a little bit more help working through LODs, you know, we, I'll show you two more examples, but we do have a whole course on LODs and parameters and sets. To me, those are the three things that you can learn the theory, but really it's when you start seeing practical application that things really begin to click. And you know, when you see something in your own dashboard, oh yeah, this is when I need an LOD or a parameter, or I'm gonna use a set to accomplish this thing. So we've got a couple of those classes coming up over the winter, along with a whole bunch of other classes. So why not come and join us? And if you wanted to take multiple classes, you might as well sign up for our Tableau Training Passport. We think it's great value. You can access all our classes, half the cost, and you get a free office hour, which is super cool. I think high value there. Okay. Another one I wanted to show you is this finding the highest value in a range. So we're looking at all our customers and looking at their individual orders. And then I want to know something like, okay, what was the highest value order in dollars per customer? I only want to keep that. Now, there are a couple of ways that you could do it. You could create this view and filter it using rank. That would work. However, sometimes you don't really want to use a filter at that point, and maybe we want to say, mm, let's keep, right, just that order amount like this. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to create an LOD called the maximum order amount per customer. Now, here's what I want to check first. There, there are two ways that we can do this, and I thought I'm going to show you both uh, because, hey, I'm a generous guy. So here we're going to say for each customer ID and each order ID, give me the sum of sales. Okay, nice. And then max that. Now, why wouldn't we say for each customer ID and each order ID, show me the maximum sales? Well, because maximum sales is going to return one single sale, like literally one product sold. What was the biggest dollar amount you paid for a single product? Whereas this is going to find what was the total sum of sales for each customer in each order. So if there were multiple products in an order, we just want the total order amount. Then max it. Give me the maximum sum of sales, not just maximum sales. Does that make sense? So you're allowing us to find the maximum total sales amount, which is pretty cool. Then that field goes up here and we can see 564 is the maximum sum of sales. So let's fact check that. There we go, five, six, four. So we're good to go. However, you could do something similar using the include function. So just like we chatted about why you might wanna use exclude earlier, include is very, very similar in terms of the logic for why you'd use it. You want it to be uh, changed by dimension filters um, and uh, whatever else I said earlier, that was really good. But I <laughs> just jokes, I forgot it now. So here's how we do it. So if we want to make sure this is, this is able to be influenced by dimension filters, we don't have to worry about context filters and things like that. We are just going to double check here. Maybe this is the value we want to remember. So mobile Alabama 5463. We're going to build something that's called our largest city sales. And we're basically just going to say, look, include the city field and show me my sum of sales. Now, Exclude indicates to Tableau, here is the field that you need to ignore, or here are the fields that you want to ignore. 
and then aggregate the data for everything else that's in the view, you know, for all the other dimensions that are in the view. However, include works the opposite way. So you're saying this level of detail is not in the view, but I want you to pull it in when you aggregate the sum of sales over here. I find include a little bit more abstract than exclude, to be honest, but I'm kind of thinking this is the example where I would use include the most where I'm thinking, okay, this dimension isn't in the view and I want to pull it in. Um, and so let's take the city field. It's almost like, um, let me show you what would happen. So uh, let's double click on this as well. So it's almost like I have sliced up my sum of sales into all my cities. But because I use an include expression, that slice up, you know, that, that breaking down of sum of sales into little cities exists where the city is in the field, is in the view or not. So the minute I take city out, my largest sales, uh, let's open this out, the largest city sales still returns the largest city sales, right? Because my sum of sales for this particular field is still broken up into all the little cities behind the scenes, whereas this sum of sales is not, it's just being aggregated for all the dimensions in the view. I hope that helps. I find include to be the most abstract, but because we've said we've included the city field, it's I'm able to break sum of sales up into that level and just show the maximum sum of sales for the city in the state. If you have more questions about that, pop them below or hit me up for an office hour. So I hope those are helpful. In our Mastering Tableau Calculations 2, we have loads and loads of examples of where you'd use LODs and the space to ask questions. But I think these are one of the most powerful tools and something that Tableau does incredibly well in comparison to other BI tools out there. So if you do have other questions, feel free to pop them in the, in the discussion below. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Otherwise, we'll see you soon. Thanks so much for joining us.